both as a technical specification, but really at its heart, it provides business benefit. So if you have two companies, for example, a website that sells clothing and a bank, and you want to actually allow people to spend their money on that website, you could use OAuth. So you could go into the website, you could click on a little weblet, and it'll say, please log into your bank account here to transfer money to the website. The website that could then take that permission that that user's just given it to actually transfer money from the bank to its own account. So it's actually enabling a business model between the website and the bank. And this can be used in a lot of different ways. It can be used to create federated logins between websites. It can be used to share data. The real magic behind it is that it incorporates the end user into its decision-making process. So the end user decides, yes, I'm willing to allow this website to get access to my money, or yes, I'm willing to allow this website to get hold of my email address. And by sidestepping all of, the, all of those legalities around a back-end integration, they're putting the onus on the user and putting it in the end user's hands to make that choice and that decision, and then to perhaps later revoke it. So what I'm showing here is basically how I can take a set of permissions and associate them with an API in the system. So what did I just do? I, what I basically did was I correlated an API with a set of permissions that the user has to give that API. So if you look at my example between the clothing store, the online clothing store and the bank, I've basically gone and configured the API, the bank's API, with specific permissions that the user has to agree to to allow the clothing store to access their money. So I've associated the money resource with a particular operation. And when, they, when the clothing store tries to access that bank account, the user is going to be presented with a screen that says, will you allow this website to get access to your money? And that is what I've done in the previous configuration. So what we can see here is the actual screen that the end user gets presented with, where he chooses to share his money or to give his money to the clothing store website. So SOA software provides in this particular scenario, it provides the OAuth server, and it provides the branded user experience that you actually saw. So both the configuration of the API and the resources and how they associate with the API, as well as the actual screens and the actual user interaction that the end user went through. And then ultimately the gateway that intercepts the API requests between the shopping store and the bank and make sure that the right permissions have been given to the right people.